Hi, welcome again to this unique innovative customer service training. Today we are going uh, to present to you the introduction of chapter two, which is we are going to look uh, into origin and ancient hospitality. Still module one, because this is in a day one. Day one will cover at least uh, three chapters. And then day two, it will be module two. That is our poster for chapter two. Before we continue, I will uh, always like to remind you guys that uh, this particular customer service uh, training is, is combined different uh, soft skills. So this is like a welcome to the world of a soft, soft skills. So we are ready to empower you. And these are the soft skills that we mentioned there. Now, during this journey, there'll be a different touch of different soft, soft skills. And we, as, as we know that the soft skills are hard to, to measure or even hard uh, to learn over time. But in this unique uh, training, we combine all of this for you and it will be pinpointing different uh, chapters. So you'll be ready to empower your soft skills. So welcome to this journey. And these are the soft, major soft skills, emotion intelligence, which is including all these others, empathy, social skill, communication skill, problem solving skills, leadership, creativity, teamwork, adaptability, and work ethic. Just, just think, you're in the hospitality industries, you're in a front office, or you're a server, or you're back of the house, or any position, Think of all those skills. You need them, okay? At one point, we all need them. Even there's a supervisor supervising you, still you need a leadership skill. Still you need creativity, yeah? Because at the end of the day, you don't uh, think of yourself here that you'll be in the same position. You need to develop yourself to move to the career level. So, during this journey, you must keep your seatbelt tight all the time because you may experience turbulence. By saying that, meaning that you'll ask all this question which I mentioned there. What I'm doing here? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why have to learn this? You see, why, why, why I'll keep reminding this slide in each chapter? Because I've experienced when I presented this in East Africa, in Dubai, when I presented this uh, training, I've, I, I learned that so even when, when I was in Baku, also in Azerbaijan, uh, I've, learned, I've learned, because it's a good way uh, to, to evaluate your training. So I, I've learned that some of the students were like confused, what, why I'm doing here, what I'm doing here. They are not patient to stay up to the end of the training. I hope uh, you recall uh, karate kids movies or or any 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 Japanese uh, you know karate or, or they we call gochuru. When I was 11 years old, I learned karate. Okay, and my master, uh, before even we learn anything, he is keeping us in the garden. Say, Hassan, go to the garden. Yeah, you know, clean the grasses and all this. And I think you have seen this in some movie. It doesn't make sense. I come here to learn. You know, to learn karate. And you're going, to, you're going to tell me that I'm going to cut the grass? Yes, you go and cut the grass. Okay, go back to this. You know, you're going to learn one of those skills there. So when I'm presenting this training, when I when we move from one chapter to another, you have to know that I'm preparing you, okay, without knowing, because soft skill is hard to measure and is also hard, you know, to, to transfer this knowledge. Many people uh, going through the experience. So as you can see in the slide is a self-explanatory, okay? You cannot, uh, you can say A is better than B, but you cannot say A is 95 and B is 72. No, no, you cannot do that. So this is the same with this uh, uh, training that we are going to present to you and this message for the HR, for the decision makers. You, you have to understand you're in a good hand when you're going to choose this training for your staff. 
these are the, the measures at least I can present for you for now. Okay, so you can measure by engagement rate, tracking productivity rates, look and impact on conflicts, survey customer satisfaction, measure and compare stand, uh, staff turnover. And all this, when we had prepared this uh, T2QS model together to a quality service model, I came across all this, uh, that the, the staff are turnover is very high, uh, staff satisfaction is very low, uh, communication between staff is very low, you know, there's no teamwork, you know, so this is affecting your customer. So anyway, uh, I have to start this few slides, okay? And uh, also a reminder because of the current uh, situation, uh, that is a World Health Organization poster. Let's protect ourselves and others. A second post, be kind to address the stigma. Share the latest facts and avoid hyperbole. Show solidarity with affected people. Tell the story of people who have experienced the virus. Okay, please. Uh, this is not like the end of the world. All Whoever get the virus is going to pass away, no. Uh, for information, I got the virus I'm sharing with you, but I'm, I'm delivering a cause now. I'm delivering a presentation of the cause. I'm perfectly fine now, okay? So <laughs> don't worry. Ground rules, same. Sit off your mobile, keep ready, and uh, that's my introduction as I uh, introduce you to, to the, uh, from the chapter one. Now let's start our chapter two, the origin and ancient hospitality. Again, as you can see, uh, uh, Swana Training Institute logo is there because this course is adopted by Swana now and is offered officially by the Institute. So you can get your certified certificate from KHDA. Okay, so this is a unique, co uh, unique training, as I said, it's not any other training that you have seen out there. And today we are going to talk about our product in hospitality, which we need to know more about the hospitality itself. There are a lot of uh, content in this uh, particular chapter because other chapter, the content is low. So, so I, will, I will introduce you in this uh, introduction, few of them, which is mentioned there. Okay, we have a uh, video, which I cannot play video in this one. The content is very low. But we have a lot of uh, real life examples and uh, quizzes and uh, inspiring stories. I will share a few today during this journey. Okay, you ready? Okay, hospitality is not to change people, but to offer them space where change can take place. Okay, you receive a guest, you are not, it's not a job to change their mind or what, what, what they are coming from, you know. Let them come as they are, respect their culture, respect their decision, and maybe you can share uh, knowledge between a guest and a host. You don't try to change a guest. Okay, now let's say origin of hospital. Many of you maybe already heard, but is uh, is, is, is originated from hospes, which is a Latin word, host, guest, a stranger. Now, this is the thing that Hawaii Hassan is introducing this. We know about it, yes, I know. But if you tell me that you're working in hospitality and you don't know about your guest, okay? And you don't know about yourself. Uh, that's why I'm reminding you. The word hospitality is you and the guest, yeah? So hospice is came origin from hostess, which is also meaning a stranger or enemy, okay? So when I introduce this, these two words, hospice and hostess, okay? Hospice is host, uh, guest, and hostess is meaning stranger and enemy. So you need to treat everybody equally. Even if you're enemy, you have to calm them down and you will understand from this chapter, you know, why people, they welcome everybody, even someone you don't know. But because of that kindness and warm with heart, they all calm down and even they cannot hurt you anymore. So hospice and hostess, if you combine, you get the word like host, hostel, hotel, and then hospitality. So by the, and there's another word in Latin with hospitalis, which is, means a guest chamber, a guest lodging, or an inn. So we've learned that 
this hospitality is, you know, is, is originated from the or hospice and hostess, and these are meaning host, guest, stranger, enemy. Yeah. So we at least we know the origin of this word, where it came from. So what is hospitality then? I know many of you can share with me, but uh, let, let, let's move on and see what's the hospitality. In the class, I will be asking you and everybody will share their thought, what is understanding of the host meaning of hospitality? The French scholar and prophetic contributor to the encyclopedia, he said, the virtue of a great soul that cares for the whole universe through the ties of humanity. The virtue of a great soul. Great soul, this one, you say great soul, you have a warm heart, you have empathy, you have a kindness, you have a love. But okay, these are the threat for you to be in the hospitality industry, especially those who are facing customer, or even those who have very few time facing customer. It's your responsibility to be hospitable. Well, as per Wikipedia, they said is the relation between a guest and a host, where the host receives the guest with goodwill, including the reception and the entertainment of a guest, visitor, or stranger. Okay, we are good on that. So in a simple world, it's all about people welcoming other people into their home or other place where they work or spend their time. Hospitality is all about the art of entertaining on or receiving guests. Is the art. So I, do you have that art? Do you have that quality of entertaining someone or receiving someone, okay? When you receive someone, because you know, dealing with human is very difficult, I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't blame people in the Western world. They are, you know, they adapt uh, dogs, they adapt cats, you know, they adapt animals. It's very easy than human, okay? With all respect to human, but they're very hard. So you have to be very careful when you serve your customer. So walking. The most ancient exercise, and it's still the best modern exercise. And that's why I put this quote, because I'm about to introduce the ancient hospitality. And that's why you're thinking, I have to know the very old, thousand years old hospitality. What have to do with me now? Well, if you see this quote, walking is, people walk since a million of years ago, a thousand of million. They're walking, yes. But today, if someone tell you, what is the best way to keep you healthy? So no, go to brisk, they call brisk walking, yes? So you go back in time. Always, always we need to go back in time. The current situation return us back in time. This pandemic remind us, they put us a break because people, you know, like they forgot themselves. They forgot the natural living. They forgot, many forgot about what is the, uh, meaning of social, you know, like meaning to stay together. Everybody was busy on their internet, busy on their TikTok or whatever. There's no social connection. So pandemic, I say, is bad and, and hopefully we're going to beat it. But I'm telling you, it teaches us a very good lesson to put the break, to remember each other, to be uh, kind, to be empty, empathetic with others, you know. We are staying now, everybody forced to stay home, whether you want it or not, with your family. Yeah? People, I'm telling you, people are like, uh, they don't see family once in a week, once in a month, and they're in the same city. Can you believe? They're coming from work, they're going to the, you know, like happy hours and all this, and in the weekend, they're like outside. Okay, I'm not saying it's bad, but what I'm trying to make the point, the pandemic returned us to the ancient time people staying together, but it's only hard. I know that is a lockdown. Uh, we need to be free, we need to go outside. But when, we, when, the, when the lesson come, you know, when they teach someone lesson, it's sometimes becoming harsh for them to remember. Okay, I will let you to go out, but to remember this, this and this, this. You need to appreciate people. You need to appreciate, uh, so you know, like being together. Anyway, I hope I'm clear on that, but okay, let's look uh, about the ancient hospitality. 
A soul of hospitality and a heart of humanity is a house of love, peace, freedom, liberty, and justice. Who don't need that? Consider our current situation. Who don't need that? And you, hospitality professional, you're in a very unique uh, situation now to learn such things. So when you go back, when you get another job, I know many lost their job, you'll be ready to to move on with the soul of hospitality. Well, others in Far East, they translate a guest as a god. So maximum care is a must and a choice. The Far East, in general, they are, they are excellent in, in quality of, of when they provide the hospitality because it's part of their custom, okay? And uh, we all welcome this uh, training from all over the world, but in this particular chapter, uh, there are uh, people from East Asia and a majority of them from that part of the world, they will really know what you are talking about because this is in their culture, deep, deep rooted in their culture. Okay, they see the guest as a god. Yeah? Uh, from my traveling experience uh, uh, around the world, I've noticed uh, for, like in Europe and far, you know, like in Western world, uh, this is, uh, you know, like, it's a little, little bit forgotten, even in some part of the Middle East. So, like, if you're attending, the, you know, this training is reminding us, okay, that really to respect the guest. What I'll share today with you, uh, there are three main hospitality rules, and uh, from the research and from all the from the books. So what we've learned that there are three main rules the ancient hospitality believe. First one is to respect from host, the respect from host to guest. So must be hospitable to stranger, provide guests with shelter, food and protection, avoid asking any question until guest is settled. That's the first rule, which is applied all over the world. Okay, if you go far east, West, in the Middle East, this is the same. The second, from guest to host, they have to be kind, thankful to host, avoid being a burden, fish starts to stink on a third day, share story knowledge with the host. Then the third, exchanging gift if any. I, I, I hope you heard about this fish start to stink on a third day. <laughs> because uh, in, in this chapter also, but uh, this is, uh, I will, uh, I will not able to introduce here in this introduction, but in the, in the full course, we introduce also about the tent and about the Middle East. And so at one point, uh, we believe that a guest is maximum can stay, uh, you get a, a maximum uh, uh, guest relation in three days, you know, for three days. After three days, then he's becoming like, a, like helping only, you know, like a charity. He's not a guest anymore. Like someone who don't have a thing, okay, let's help. So fish sting start to sting on a third day. Same thing is teaching with us that when you go somewhere, you have to think about uh, your host. Don't stay for a week or for a month, okay? Make something. And, and, and I believe all the hotels, uh, the one professional were working in the hotels, most of the guests also, they are booking two, three days, two, three, most majority. This is what I believe because I visited more than 150 hotels and with families and honestly, even with me and family, we are booking maximum three days or two days, you know, to get that maximum service also. You know, I don't want the staff to get tired of us. I mean, even if we, if we have a one week uh, holiday, eh, uh, I can, you know, like we, we are booking uh, two, type, two hotels, two locations. Yeah. So we're still uh, following the old rules. Hospitality must be extended even towards your enemy who come, who come to your house. Even the tree also never withdraw its shade from the woodcutter. Now, I hope you got this point. You know, he's cutting the tree, but he's tired and he's he going to rest under the tree, under the shade. <laughs> so uh, I hope, uh, well, it's, uh, for me, I just don't consider enemy, but uh, from my experience, what I want to tell you consider that those who are not uh, on the same nationality or other nationality. And really, I tested, you know, in real life, you feel discriminated, honestly. 
you know, the way they receive the stuff. If, if you are not in the same side of their nationality, they treat you differently. Not openly, but you can sense. We are human beings. We have a sense of feeling. I can sense you. Are you welcoming me from your heart? I can sense. You can sense also. So you're going to cheat on that, really. So, uh, uh, but when you have the same nationality, oh, you know, they, are, you, they become humble, they're talking to you in their own language, you know, you feel the service different. Don't do that, don't do that. Treat all your guests equally. Treat, even if they're coming from the same nationality. Then we introduce also in this chapter about the Middle Eastern, and uh, most of us, uh, you know, most of the hospitality profession from all over the world, by the way, they are looking at the Middle East as the, the next uh, big thing, you know. Even now, we are, I know we are in, under pandemic, but I know after pandemic, still, still there are a lot of hotels here, you know, there are a lot of resorts they are building. So most of the profession coming from all around the world. So we find out that it's important to know about this, you know, this particular part of the world. So we just want to introduce, as you saw, you know, all these countries here is in the Middle East. When you say Middle East, in all these countries. So to the Arabs, extending humble hospitality is of a simply associated degree, ad admiral issue to do. It may be a matter of honor and additionally a sacred duty. It's connected also to the religion, you know. You have to be kind. You have to be kind even to the animals, not to the human beings. So this is a touch, is the strong foundation here about uh, uh, kindness. Well, we, as we know that uh, even the Middle East is the major uh, world of religions. So we don't talk to, we don't want to talk religion, but you cannot avoid it, okay? The billion of people have a different religion. So believers offer respect, love, peace, and treat cordially to each other. Believers believe is also in, in believes in attracting blessing to their home, wealth, and family when welcoming guests and sharing meals in a group. Holy books offer from major religion incited on hospitality and exceed strange expectations. We're going to share this in the full class. Okay, some few stories, some few uh, you know uh, inspiring story about this. But in today. Let me share that about eating in the dark. This is one of the inspired story that I want to share with you. Uh, how, uh, it is like a long time ago, uh, somewhere in the Middle East. Uh, there was a leader of the, of the religious in the group. Okay, he received a guest, but during that time, he did not have anything in his household. He asked his follower, please, plan, plan, please, can you take care of my guest today? I cannot welcome to my home because I know I don't have uh, anything. The follower, with all the respect to the leader, he accepted, although he don't know what's going on at his house. He went to his house with the guest, it's almost sunset, and he go to the house, and he, he welcomed the guest in the house and uh, immediately go and ask his wife. We have a guest today. Tell me, tell me what's there in the kitchen. We have anything? Say, please, my husband. We don't have anything. We have only a few dates and uh, one bread. And I need to feed a child also before he go to sleep. So he said, I cannot turn down this guest, okay? The guest must be served. So the dark was falling and then they did not switch on and their candles. They say we run out of uh, something, you know, we cannot sit on the counter, but bring the food. And the guest was eating in the dark. And the host also was eating. But then it came out that the two, ho the host, the, 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 you know, the, the, the mother uh, sent the child to bed with only one bed and water, did not eat at all. And the other food is given to the guest. And he eat in the dark so the guest will not see that he's the one with a plate of food and his host plate is empty. He pretend to eat. You see how this is inspired. The guest, he don't know. He's, you know he's, he don't know the guest, but still, see how people are humble. So this is an inspiring story. If people can do this, we, 
most of them, you know, majority of us, we cannot do even 50% of that. So be the reason someone smiles. Be the reason someone feels loved and believes in the goodness in people. That's, that's a very inspiring quotation. Let me share with you now uh, the Mubarak bin Landa. <laughs> Sorry about that. Why Mubarak bin London? Uh, he's a Sir Wilfred per, uh, Patrick the Singer, and uh, even I had an opportunity to go and visit in Al Ain. There's a whole museum, uh, museum for him, and I took a photo that Mubarak bin London exhibition in Al Ain. This particular gentleman was a special for the UAE because he's the one who who went through the Rubul Khali the uh, open, open desert, which is part of the UAE. He's the first one to cross there, and he reached up to Al Ain. But he was coming uh, from Addis Ababa, and uh, during this his journey, you know, he wrote books, okay, Arabian Sand, and, uh, and he was born and raised in, in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, but he was a British. He wanted to find out uh, where these locusts are coming from, Maybe they are coming from Middle East, so he was traveling to Middle East. So why I'm telling you this, uh, I'll tell you details uh, in the full course, but then uh, let's move on in the next slide. But we need to know the person first. So this guy, the Sinja, he crossed empty desert two times. He was most welcome in UAE. And also the guy, they give him a nickname, Mubarak bin London because they couldn't pronounce his English. And he wear like them, he traveled through the desert. Okay, he traveled with the, some of the tribes in UAE. He was, uh, he was uh, you know, very easy going. They are surprised all this guy from Europe, but actually he was born in, 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 in Addis Ababa. Even when he speak, his English is like Ethiopian, although he's a European. So one day, this is an inspired story now, why we are telling, why we want to know about uh, Mubarak bin London. The story is the tale of an old man from Beit al-Imam who came stumbling one night into a Bedouin camp, worn out and exhausted, okay? So this old man, he saw him and he started, uh, uh, the singer, he started to ask, uh, by the way, we, we got this from his book, page number 71. So you want to ask his, uh, his host there in the tent, who this old guy, you know, is dirty and, uh, you know, you can feel that he was very tired. But then everybody was stand up and uh, greet him, either by kissing his head or forehead, you know, that's the custom. Everybody. So he said that this guy is uh, from Beit Imam. He was very rich. He has more than 100 camels. But then hospitality, you know, empathy to the guest, every guest to come to his tent, he's offering a meat. So he keep offering a meat until he ran out of a meat. So that's why he was so humble. He was so humble to the guest, you know, and until now he don't have anything. So he was so much attached, you know, to the, to the strong belief that the guest are the blessing. And of course, he was blessed, and everybody was respecting him. So that is the the, the inspired story from uh, Mubarak bin London. How someone can you know give all his uh, camels to guest. So let not the emphasis of hospitality lie in bed and board, but let truth and love and honor and courtesy flow in all thy deeds. And that is a catchy one, you know? We need to be truth and love and honor, okay? There's no agenda here in serving your guest. You need to be totally swimming. Yeah, you don't just test the water. You have to be swim completely when you're serving your guest. So that's the uh, end of summary chapter two. And that is just summary. We have a lot of uh, video, role plays, Okay, and uh, brainstorming, but that is the introduction only. Thank you so much. And this is the, as I, this slide introduce you to our full course training. 
and that's another slide upon completion from SWANA training with the booklet with certified uh, certificate from KHDA, Knowledge Human Development Authority Dubai. And that's uh, full address of the Training Institute. Thank you so much for your patience and to listen to this workshop. See you again to chapter three. Thank you.